Hey guys, welcome to another Zebra tutorial. Uh, last week I got a really interesting uh, request. It was how to make a coin sound in Zebra. Um, like a coin flipping in your hand or a coin falling on the ground. This was the original sound. And now the challenge is to um, rebuild that in Zebra. But first off, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Also check out ASRSounds.com and zebratutorials.com for a lot more tutorials and also check out the um, interview that we did this week with Joris Heckman and he's kind of the father of Zebra he made the synth so um, obviously he does know a lot about it and we asked him some interesting questions so check that out on uh, on ADSR you can, I think you can find it on Facebook um, so let's get to the sound, this was uh, once again the sound that we're trying to make, and it was uh, it was pretty complicated, and it took me quite a while to get somewhere close. But uh, this is what I got so far, and there are a few things that we that we need to listen for, and if you want to uh, reproduce sounds like this, there's there are certain ways you can approach it. Uh, obviously, you you listen to it quite a lot, and you start to notice things. For example, we have the sound going sort of lower in pitch because it starts very high, and then when the coin is hitting the floor and then bouncing, it gets lower. Then we have two parts of the sound. We have the high, the high fling sound that that you hear ring out it's very high and then we have the rest of the sound that is the, the coin falling and also we hear a little bit of reverb um, in a small room and I think I've used a little bit too much uh, reverb and I used a uh, home space it was a bathroom and I did use an external reverb for this because this is a convolution reverb so that means that it's made from um, actual rooms and it's gonna sound the most realistic then in Zebra we have quite some stuff going on let's see a lot of modulation um, but I'll I'll just show you the the approach more than the actual sound what I did is um, I set the reset on so it's gonna be the same sound every time I trigger it's such a subtle sound so I don't want to change anything so that's why we press this button then I set the key scaling to zero because I don't really want it to listen to pitch I set the tuning very high and I modulate the sync um, this knob and all this stuff is pretty random I did it just because it, it sounded good so I tried a lot of stuff and this one was sounding good to me And there's not really a, a right or a wrong in this, it's just um, trying stuff and, and to get you closer to the original sound. Uh, same is true for the effects, I used the turbulence and the expander, but some other effects might work better. We can try for example the scatter. So that is the um, whole first oscillator and the wave is just the same I think if we go over here. Yeah it's just a, a saw wave. And then we get to the filter which is a decimator and I chose that because it has sort of a metallic sound to it. You can hear that when I lower the cutoff. I set the drive all the way to the to the maximum value. I also tried the uh, ring because that also has 
quite a metallic sound to it. Um, if we set that to this channel and I mute this one. Those are the modules that gonna that are gonna make it sound more metallic. Um, another one you could try that maybe works is the sideband. That has quite a me metallic sound to it as well. Um, then we go to the effects, and this is where where uh, it really starts. Um, what I did first is use the equalizer and I boosted a lot in the high end and then at the end of the original sound you can hear it um, that more low rumbling so what I did to sort of get close to that is I went to the mod matrix and I modulated the uh, equalizer bands with an LFO and that is LFO1, so that is this one and the um, high shelf is going down so it gets less high as the sound um, progresses and the um, let's see where is that oh I think I deleted the the uh, low stuff but what I modulated also first was this so that it gets and then it needs to be after the delay but then it gets lower when the sound uh, progresses like that actually that isn't so bad let's try to use another envelope to um, raise that EQ band and we're gonna choose envelope 4 I think that would be fine and we're gonna choose the equalizer um, and we say gain low shelf Oh, let's choose envelope 3 because it has a sustain oh. okay that's pretty cool um, then the delay is um, modulated as well and this one is this one is scary because I modulate the ratio and um, shit can really get out of control when you do that if you set the ratio to the max you're it's not good um, basically so really be careful with that and use a an limiter like I did and then you can try to uh, subtly um, modulate the delay ratio and that is why it gets faster um, every time because I'm basically doing this and then I used another filter um, and that filter the cutoff is modulated down when the sound pro progresses also to make it lower so let's listen to the original sound again so it gets a bit, uh, it gets a bit lower in the end um, well other things that I did are let's see I used a very short uh, very short envelope because I want to hear the delay without the delay it's just um, that I think I can even make it shorter all right and then I used um, some envelopes on the decay to change this value but I think we can forget about that now I talked about the EQ I talked about the delay ratio um, this one first I used two delays but not anymore so this one isn't used then I modulated the delay mix so I give it more mix as the sound progresses like that and I modulated the delay low pass so it's filtering down a little bit um, and the feedback is going up a little bit all with the same envelope 3 
and that has a fairly slow attack and it has a sustain so it stays at that position and same is true for the uh, cross feedback so um, it looks like a lot but it's not uh, nothing too special then let's check in the second lane what I did here is I sent this to another bus uh, so this one is going through bus 1 and that is this bus so it's not going through um, this first lane and it's also not going through the delay this one is going through the reverb and I did that because when you hear the original sound you hear uh, the, that, that other sound that is just ringing out and I wanted to make that with this so together it will be and maybe we can try to filter this a little bit more with the high pass oh. um, so yeah if you if you want to make these kinds of sounds it's um, it can be really difficult but it's also it's very very interesting um, I was really happy with this challenge and that is why I always um, say to you guys um, give me an idea or um, just say what you want to learn because with this sound or really I, le I learned a lot myself and I was able to make a few different versions and I was able to make some effects of it I can let's see I hope it's not too loud but I have a few different versions here That one, for example, it's not really a, a coin anymore, but it was. I started with that coin sound and uh, I changed it and made made a lot more effect sounds with the uh, modulating delay, and then I got this one. So yeah, that was that was a pretty cool um, challenge. But if you just want to make the coin sound, try this approach. And it's not, it's not. There's not any right or wrong. I mean, there are a few things you can try to make it. You can do to try and make it more realistic, like um, the equalizer. Uh, a lot of equalizers, um, a realistic reverb, and you can try some modules that uh, will give you a metallic sound. You can try the uh, cross modulation filters and use the FM. I think I started out with an FM oscillator initially because FM is also giving that uh, metallic sound quite a lot. So you can get pretty close with that. Um, listen to the sound very carefully, use realistic reverbs. Um, do a lot of EQ shaping and that should uh, get you close um, then one other thing I want to mention what is it oh yeah if you really like this kind of sound design and you're really into um, these real-world sounds and you want to synthesize them it's also it's you can try um, physical synthesis because zero is a great synth and you can get really close with it uh, much closer than I did but you also have synthesizers that are uh, specifically designed for uh, making these real world sounds and if you're a logic user one example um, is sculpture um, I'll show that real quick I know this is a zebra tutorial but for those interested um, because this this one is made to to make those sound and here you can choose between steel and glass and wood and so you already have your materials that your um, sound was made of so I think for a coin you would go for steel or glass might also work and you can hear that you're 
you immediately get a lot closer and these are not advanced settings these are pretty much basic settings But yeah, um, that stuff is, is made for it, and um, otherwise uh, just mess around with Zebra and you can get pretty close, but it's, it's advanced. Um, um, it's gonna take you a while probably, but just see it as a challenge. Um, choose a sound like this, maybe a slightly easier one, and listen to it very carefully and try to reproduce it. And it's not that it's it's useless, because you can, you can make very, you can make awesome stuff with it. So that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. And um, I'd like to ask you guys to give me ideas like this. Because I think it's really awesome. Uh, you learn something. I learn something. And uh, th this was a great challenge. So I was, was really happy with that. So see you next week.